Hey everybody, it's Mr. Pilgrim here, and today I'm going to be starting my very painful and long, arduous journey through Dark Souls 2 to help you get the Platinum Trophy in the fastest way that I think is possible. And by the end of this, I'm going to hate myself. You're going to hate me for making you do all the stuff that I'm going to make you do. But it's honestly, like I said, I think it's the best way to go about getting the trophy. Now, there are a few differences, though, when trying to do this on the um, last-gen version of this, and that is that you do not have to touch the DLC at all. Thank God for anyone who is playing this on PS3 or Xbox 360. But anyways, I guess we'll just instantly start this video. Uh, I'm going to hate this so much. Okay, but uh, anyways... Um, to anyone who's watched my How to Break the Game uh, with a friend on here, well, in Dark Souls 2, it'll probably be the video I uploaded before I uh, started the series. At the end of that, I also said I was going to start this series. And I know it's taken me a bit to even start this, but bear with me. Um, there's going to be a few things similar to that video that we do follow, and that's just how I like to start off the game, just for the sake of, you know... Um, getting overpowered kind of early on. But class, you want to do knight, gift, life ring, and we're good to go. Now also, just to be safe, I like to run up here and grab this human effigy. One thing I do like though that they did change from Scholar of the First Sin compared to the regular is they added way more summons throughout the game. So like if you're going up against a boss fight and you know that there's actually some NPC summons that you can do. Oh, almost forgot to grab this. Then you know you can, you're not alone in fighting the boss. Which somewhat makes some of the bosses easier and also makes some of them harder. Depending, just because every summon, well, whenever you summon someone, you'll have the boss will have more uh, HP and stuff, which honestly isn't that much of a downside. One thing I will say, though, is sometimes having a summon will mean that you know, sometimes it's a little bit more annoying. Like, say, the smelter demon. <laughs> Fuck that guy. But, yeah, you just want to make your way like you're going through the game normally. I also will be showing you, um, at what point in time when to do certain things I'm not going to be doing a like 100% walkthrough it's just going to be things that I uh, that you should pick up now once we get here to Majula like this we'll want to run over here grab these souls now the difference from uh, how you uh, uh, for my one video is I'm also going to be including you know how to get it uh, covenants now this first video um, I'm gonna try not to have the videos so long but you know if certain areas take longer than others then so be it now you also want to join every covenant yes yes don't care I'm not gonna be staying with this covenant for long but that'll net you a covenant trophy right there there's one trophy I'm probably not even gonna have to, you know, give you a guide on how to do, because it might just happen naturally while playing through the game, and that's just to die. It's really all it is. Now the next thing that we're going to do, oh yeah, you might as well should go equip the life ring, is we're gonna come talk to this guy. Now we're gonna get two things from him once, you know, we finally can. Come on. First thing you want to do is join the Covenant, and that'll get you another Covenant trophy. That's two within like the first ten minutes of this. Now another thing you also want to do is learn this gesture, because there's actually going to be a few people who we get gestures from. Now from here, come talk to her. Get an Estus flask. 
I'm just gonna sit right here real quick okay now from here you just you know make your way like trying to play through the game normally I know this is probably super boring certain parts I may try and speed up just for the sake of it come on now one thing I will say though is starting with this class is kinda it kinda sucks because you don't have a shield you can only just you know punch but I mean basically uh, basically what we're gonna end up doing is kinda breaking the game like I do in my you know how to break the game with a friend except it's not gonna be that broken but I'm gonna grab that effigy, grab the homeward bone and souls. This area you can run by a majority of the enemies. Ah, still got hit, it's okay. Carry on, just run through this area. I mean, if you do want to try and fight any of the enemies through this area and get all the stuff you can, you know, to each their own. Here, fake him out. Roll through here. Now, here you want to actually make sure you have plenty of stamina. So, like, you can climb up this ladder. It doesn't matter if you get hit once or twice, just make sure you can get up the ladder. Open up this super slow ass door. Like the bonfire. This dude will show up. He's very annoying, but we'll kill him. Or not. There we go. Actually, that is something I actually needed. No, oh, I didn't even equip it. Now another thing you want to equip while we're here is the blue seal. Alright, now let's see if I can get this first try. Nope. Oh well. Not gonna be a problem. Might as well equip those homeward bones too. Now then from here, what you want to do is walk back out, drop down, and just kill these two. Now we also want to make sure we have full health, it's completely full, also might as well do this. And we're gonna make this jump right here. Now as you can see with the life ring and the blue seal, we were able to make it and we're able to grab a early, early fragrant branch of yore and some twinkling titanite. That'll come into play later on. We're gonna re-equip, re-heal ourselves. Now another thing that we also want to do in this area is um, get a thousand souls, just a thousand which you get easily from killing a few uh, people. This uh, iron cl old ironclad warrior actually gives you 600, which is actually really good. I got hit, it's okay. Let's see. Now, if you want a backup weapon, you can go down there and get the fire long sword. Um, it's actually a really good uh, backup weapon to have on you in case your starting weapon breaks. Because Dark Souls 2, if they're super crappy um, item degrade system. Alright, now that we... What? Oh my god, are you serious? We're just a little bit short, which honestly, I think we can fix that. Anyways, oh hello, you're actually exactly what I needed. 
Thank you. Use this. Alright, now that we're here, we're just gonna buy this key. And now we're gonna return to Majula. Okay, now that we're here, all we're simply going to do is just open this. Now we're actually going to go and use that fragrant branch of yore that we acquired. Now also what you want to do while you're here is come and talk to Ben Hart of Jugo because we're there's a going to be a few NPC character quest lines that we're going to be doing along the way. Basically you just want to keep talking to him till he just repeats himself. Grab that life gem and homework bone. Now what you want to do while we're here is do not pull this yet do not pull that okay just for the sake of uh, making life easier for yourself and also getting you once again another trophy come on simply just talk to Rosabeth and she'll thank you and then she'll also ask for some clothing now what you want to do is give equipment. I just always give her the imported set just because. And she'll move back to Majula, which is also another thing that we want. Now you want to pull that. You kind of just want to bait these enemies around a bit until the door opens. It's pretty easy. For anyone who's ever played a zombies game, you should know what to do. Just simply train him around. Wait till he walks through. Now there is a bonfire in this area that you can get if you want to get it. Uh, you don't have to. Come in here, grab those souls, and then just dip out. Pretty simple, pretty easy. You can always come back later if you want to get that bonfire. Now you just want to simply run through this area. There are going to be some more souls that we actually will pick up. Roll there. One of those souls is actually right here. Just want to walk up pick it up, try and roll away, that we don't get clusterfucked by all these enemies. Now from here, what we also want to do is, we're not going to follow the pow uh, the route that you're supposed to take for natural story progression just yet. We're actually going to come this way, which is going to be super annoying trying to do, but it's it's doable. You simply just want to run back this way. Come on, bait them out. Now you want to be really careful about getting hit by these guys because they can really get you. Like so. As, as you can see, I'm I'm kind of fucked. I'm, I'm actually fucked. But you want to grab that soul. Don't worry about dying, you know, just if you die, you die. But if not, then you normally drop down right there where he just did. Return to the bonfire, and yeah. Now then, since the only thing I lost was just a little bit of my dignity and 90 souls, we can carry on. Now in this area, I'm also going to get you another trophy. And this is normally supposed to be something that you don't get this early, but 
we might as well while we're already here. Now we're gonna come up and talk to the head of Vengarl, right here. Leave me. He's he's not. Oh, we actually have a a problem here. Sometimes in this area, these enemies will show up, and you cannot lock on to them. The only way you can see them is whenever they appear. That's not good. I'm going to be a cheap little bastard and drink some Estus. Okay, now, normally you should only have one of them appear or try and come up and fight you if you come over here. If you do, just, you know, take them out like a MLG pro champ like I just did and then get back to what you're doing. You basically just want to keep talking to Vengarl's head. You also want to learn the gesture from him. Trust me. And then what you want to do is just keep talking to him. Just spam it. Just keep spamming it until he gives you his hat. That will net you another trophy. And now from there, what you want to do is come right here, pick up these souls, and I'm pretty sure you can faintly see them, but we're also going to grab these souls right here. And if you turn back this way, run for a bit, you should come across these souls right here. I'm pushing this super close. Now, we're normally supposed to go up to the left right there, but just for the sake of things, I also like to run over this way and grab this Chlorinthy ring, which will actually help with your stamina. Also, always looking behind me when I do that, just to be safe. All right, now that we've got that, we can drop down and carry on the normal uh, story path that we're supposed to take, which is not supposed to be this early in the game, but nonetheless, and from here, I'm going to grab this bonfire. I advise resting at it just to be safe. That enemy right there will sometimes get up and attack you if you get too close to him. But nevertheless. Now from here, what you want to do is come back this way run straight here and you can roll down roll into these barrels pick up that chest or I mean those souls and then you can just run right back out no must no must I mean no must no fuss one thing I will point out now is you will need a spare fragrant branch of yore for that enemy back there but as of right now we're not gonna worry about it come over here run up grab these souls right here and a Pharaoh's Lockstone. We're also going to come over here. Come on, let me get this. Now if you come over here, you'll see this wood that you can easily break and drop down. Uh, I'm not going to grab that sorcery, it's, I'm just going to wait. But if you, I will recommend that you come and talk to Dark Diver Grandel, just because. Now what we're going to do is come over this way and grab some spare upgrade materials just because you never know. Oh wow, that was a really good hit. Let's see if my luck will prevail, and it did, thank god. Now while we're also here, gonna come out here, and roll, come back this way, grab some more souls, which will be the last that we actually pick up. Oh wait, no, not the last, the second to last that we pick up, my bad. I did that mistake as well in the other video I made. But you just want to rest again. Just just to be safe, you know. And what you want to do is come about right here and then jump. Easy peasy lemon breezy. Now the last souls we get are right here. If you want to try and grab the sublime 
sublime bone dust in that chest, you can. Um, you know, it's it's really up to you. But then you want to make this jump right here. And this is going to be the weapon that um, we're going to be using for the majority of this playthrough of breaking the game. Oh my god, I almost thought I didn't make that. Whew. But uh, yeah, that weapon is actually going to be very broken and very overpowered. So now we just travel back to Majula. Woo! Alright, now, now that we're here, as you can see, we got some souls that we gotta use. Now, the reason why we we got all those souls is so we can actually upgrade ourselves to use um, that weapon that we picked up, the Black Knight Halberd. And um, in uh, one of my playthroughs that I did on this game, I only used the Black Knight Halberd, and I was able to get to the very end of this game using only that weapon, and I never really had to worry about it breaking. So we come, talk to her, so she can let us level up. Now what we want to do is get our faith to 12, dexterity to 26, oh, that's not good, but that's okay. Let me check something. Yep, it's 26. Alright, that's not a problem. Now, if you, uh, I believe I did miss some souls. And that's okay. There's always a backup plan for this. I always forget about that. <clears throat> but yeah, if you come here can also get a free Estus Flask Shard. Which is, you know, it's it's really great to have early on. Anyways, uh, for those of you uh, who don't know about uh, how to cheese a certain boss in Dark Souls 2 super early on, I'm pretty sure by this time in its life cycle, everyone does. But if you don't, um, I'm basically going to show you now. And it's going to be in the area called the Hyde's Tower of Flame. If you want to grab a shield from that chest I just passed, um, you can. Oh, it's nine for um, faith. So that's where I messed up. I didn't miss up. I didn't miss any of the souls. Um, you do nine faith. That one I will say is my bad, but. Either way, it's still good to get some good faith early on. So, anyone who's played the original, you'll also notice a huge difference in this area. Is that they changed some enemy placements by that. They actually added hide, um, hide knights to hide tower. But we're not going to give a crap about most of these enemies. You just simply want to run through like I'm doing now. Most of the time, you can easily just walk past most of these enemies. I will say though, for this final hammer dude down here, you kind of want to bait them out. That way you've got plenty of time to enter the mist. Like so. Now here, we've got this super easy boss. You want to count six steps. And, and run. Now sometimes you'll get it, sometimes you won't, but like so. He'll run off and kill himself. Pretty easy. You'll get, you know, a pretty decent amount of souls. And you'll get a soul. Now if you want to come up here, light this bonfire. Now simply just talk to this chick. Just talk to her until she starts repeating herself. And that will cause her to go back to Majula. Which is actually part of uh, another trophy. 
But once again, I do apologize for messing up the leveling stats. So now we'll fix that now. And if you want to upgrade your strength with the leftover souls, then you can. Might as well up. I almost forgot to upgrade. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I'm messing this up. Okay, but as you can see here, I do not have the stat requirements completely to wield this weapon in one hand, but because I have two out of the three requirements, I can actually um, use this weapon with two hands, which is just ridiculous. And as you can see up here, we have Rosabef. And you can actually learn and buy some miracles from her. Some rings. But yeah. You can also have her uh, upgrade your pyromancy flame. But we're not going to do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Forest of Fallen Giants. Alright, now that we're here, um, one thing I will also like, I will say to do is just buy a couple of, a uh, couple of things from Malinchia, just for the sake of it. I bought some fire bombs to try and get this easy skip. For those of you who don't know, if you walk up to this wall and look at a certain angle and throw a fire bomb, I believe it's right here you will cause uh, that explosion by hitting those bombs on the other side. Damn it. <laughs> now, it's super pretty easy, and yeah. Now I'm gonna cut to here and kill all the enemies in the area just to make it easier. But yeah, I'll see you back whenever... I don't even know. Alright, and welcome back. Now, I've gone through and somewhat tried to clear out the area as best as I can. And that was... it wasn't that bad. But anyways, now then, from the bonfire and the shortcut, if you head out here, there'll be a couple items here. One of them is a... Estus Flash Shard, which is good to get. Now, when you first come up here, the Pursuer boss will land here. And if you don't really feel like fighting him right now, you don't have to. So you just simply drop off, he'll disappear, and you can go back up. Now from there, if you head back down, come about right here, and then roll, you'll land here. And from there, you can make this jump. I did leave that guy alive, just because I know he was never going to be a problem. Now from there, what you want to do is come here and wait for that boulder. Get, get some more human effigies, because it's always nice to have those. Uh. Now we'll want to come and kill this dude. That way he doesn't shoot us while we're talking to Kale. Simply just talk to Kale and exhaust all of his dialogue. He'll eventually give you a key, and then he'll eventually uh, end up back at the mansion in Majula at some point in time. But like I said, after he gives you the key, just keep talking until he s says, I'll be back in Majula. From there, we can leave. There is actually one area I did not decide to clear out just for the sake of it because the, you only you're only supposed to go there for early on for like upgrade materials and stuff, but the risk versus reward in that area is a little too high, it's, you know. But with this weapon, if you want to try and go to it, you can, and I will show you uh, where you're supposed to go to get there. And if you just come back through here, and it's through this door. But you're normally not supposed to go through there until you've killed the last giant. Which is a boss that will be coming up very shortly. The main thing though in this area that you actually, I will say, you should go and grab 
I almost forgot to equip that Chloranthi ring. Is in this area right here. You can actually um, bait the archers out of there to kill an enemy and also cause the bombs in that area to explode. But the item you want to grab is right there, Great Soul Arrow. That's one of the many sorceries you will have to pick up to get the platinum. Now from there, if you want to come down here, and if you actually switch to your fist and punch this door, it'll cause the enemies behind it to come out and allow you to come in and open her up. I think you get some yeah, large titanite shards and a life ring, which we surprisingly already have. If you want to open this chest, it'll have one of two traps. If you get that trap, just kind of roll right here, and you won't get hit. If you get the poison trap, just simply roll away far enough, and it won't poison you. Now, using the pharaoh's lockstone that we got, if you use it there, come over here, we're actually going to get a certain upgrade material super early on and that is a titanite slab, which you're normally not supposed to have. We also get a chlorinthy ring, but that one is actually um, not as superior as the one we already have. Got that titanite slab, which is super great to have because you'll need that for one of the trophies. And uh, to get that trophy though, you cannot, it, this weapon does not count. You actually have to use a weapon that requires you to use a titanite slab. Um, if you want to get a white sign soapstone, you'll want to talk to Pate here, go through this gate, kill the enemies, and eventually come back around to talk to him again, and he'll give you a white sign soapstone. That's just, you know, if you're trying to co-op. Grab this green blossom. Now, you want to run through here, there's nothing really much there. There are enemies up there that you can go kill with a ladder through that door. But there's not really anything up worth it. Here in this area, um, there are a few enemies. There are some amber herbs on this corpse. I accidentally did pick them up. My bad. From there, you can run up here. There are going to be some enemies that'll ambush you from right up there. If you can trigger them to walk off, you can immediately run them back around to safety down here and fight them. <sighs> Sorry about the breathing. If you come up here, get a halberd and some souls. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go fight the last giant. Which is the which is supposed to be the first boss in the game. Sadly I've already killed a boss, so yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna take this down. If you're human still, um, there's some people you can summon for this fight. But with this weapon alone, you're probably not going to need it. Because I didn't kill this enemy right here, and as you can see, I just one-shot him. I'm not going to include boss cutscenes, just for the sake of uh, making it faster. Now this is the last giant. He likes to stomp a lot. Somehow that hit me. It's okay. Just one thing I can say though when fighting a Dark Souls boss is just wow. Try not to be greedy. That's really all you can do. Because sometimes um, you'll get a couple hits in and you know then you'll get hit. And I don't think that's a trade that we all want to have. But as you can see I'm just shredding his health with this weapon. Even with that miss. He will try and stomp a lot, but just like that, it's pretty easy. Said and done. Last boss. I don't know why I did that gesture. Uh, don't want to speed run and die like I just did. You can just run through. Anyways, just from the bonfire, come down and run through. We'll try this again. I actually was hoping I wouldn't die. That way I wouldn't have to deal with enemies again. Poking me in my ass. Arch. 
sure. Not the TV show, but eh. Alright, now that this is the Pursuer. He's actually really easy. If you have a high enough adaptability, you can basically roll through most of his attacks. But you kind of want to just stay to the right. Some attacks you can just walk through, some you can't. Every time he does that, just kind of strafe to the right, and you'll be fine. That attack, you actually, um, you also like, because you can kind of just strafe to the right again. Basically, for this boss, you just, you know, like I said, uh, just be patient, don't get too greedy, and you can actually bait most of his attacks. You mainly want to try and go for one or two hits, if you can. Because see, like there, I got greedy, but in the end, he ended up dying. It's pretty simple, really. And from here, if you actually want to drop down and pick up a uh, armor set, or part of an armor set, the Drang Leg set and a sword and shield, you can. It's um right there, as you can see it. I'm not going to grab it, though. But from there, we're going to make our way to the Lost Bastille. Now that we're here, um, there's a few items we can grab. And I'm just going to grab them for the sake of it. Some human effigies, and this is the Dull Ember. Something that you, you just... Uh, you usually had to get super late in the game to give to uh, one of the blacksmiths in order to even use him. But uh, surprisingly, not uh, not on the PS4 version. Now, the reason why I'm coming back here to uh, the Hyde's Tower of Flame is to unlock, to go fight a boss, and also. Um, uh, you know, have a covenant character unlocked. We cannot join this covenant yet, but we will eventually in due time. So, alright, I'll be back after I've killed all the enemies. Alright, hey everybody, welcome back. Um, now, as you can see, I am actually outside of the boss room, and that's because I decided to summon Masterless Glencore just for some added beef when fighting this area. If you're human, his summon sign will be right here. Pretty simple and standard. Now anyways, come over here. There's actually not really any items here in uh, Hyde's Tower of Flame that is worth grabbing, really. I'm not saying that they're shit or anything, it's just trophy-wise, um, you don't really need to grab anything here. But I figured I might as well include this area to begin with, because you still need to come here and join a covenant. Which is actually this way. I know there's a few items I missed back that way. Uh, if you want to grab them, you can. Grab a Divine Blessing. Having Mastos Glencore makes some of this, uh, getting through some of this area a little bit easier. Now, one thing I will say is after you kill the spear dude up here, make sure you do not come up here first because there's a dragon. What you want to do is start running about here, let off, that way you can recharge some stamina, and if you make it right here and jump, you should uh, outmaneuver his blast, and that'll allow you to get under him and fight him. He's a pretty easy dragon fight, um, those were the two items he drops, and I've already lowered the bridge here. I do believe this is shield, I think. Ah, he more human effigies. One thing I will say, though, is actually uh, equip that shield that he dropped. Eventually, not right now. We do not have the equip load to maintain that, this weapon, and stuff. Here, we're going to fight the old dragon slayer. Pretty easy boss fight. As you can see, he kind of hit me. But during this fight, I kind of demonstrate how nice it is to have a summon. 
Roll away. Going for the punish. He actually can be staggered, which is good to know. Sometimes he'll just end up walking around like a uh, dumbass, which is actually very exploitable. Let's see. And that's the old Dragon Slayer. I know I fought him like a cheap bastard, but eh. He's not really that hard of a fight even by yourself. Just like I said, don't be greedy. And you should, shouldn't should have a problem really. Get some cracked blue eye orbs. And this, I know for a fact, is the tower shield. Yep. Now, this is the so-called uh, covenant dude that we cannot join just yet. That's because we need to first get a covenant item. And when playing this game and doing this guide, I'm actually doing everything offline. So you're going to be asking me, well, how am I supposed to get covenant items if I'm playing offline? The best way is um, there's actually one covenant item that you can get. Uh, one for his covenant and another for another covenant, which I will show you at some point. But I think that's going to be the end of part one for now. Anyways, um, I hope this guide is going to be very helpful to a lot of people. Um, I'd also like to thank... You know, like I've said before in my last video, Ots Darva for making his How to Be Overpowered in 15 Minutes video. If you haven't seen that video, uh, I would recommend watching it because it just shows how uh, surprising it is to break the game whenever you have a friend. But anyways, that's that'll be all for it today. Au revoir. Oh, one thing I did forget is um, if you actually go to Malintia and spend like 10,000 souls and then talk to her, she'll give you the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring plus one, which I recommend equipping. Um, and then you also just want to talk to her until eventually she starts repeating herself, saying it's high time that she packs up, and that way she'll move back to Majula.